India is a land of entrepreneurs, a land of new thoughts, new ideas and new generation leaders driving the wheels of progress. Let's now hear from one such dynamic young leader, Karan Adani, Chief Executive Officer Adani Ports and SEZ in conversation with Mr. Manish Tiwari about the role of young leaders in the next phase of India's growth. Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining us here today at Amazon Sambhav 2022. I am Manish Tiwari and I lead a team of supercharged Amazonians who are focused on transforming the way India buys and sells. I am very, very excited today to speak to an important guest we have, someone who represents a young dynamic India that values innovation and embraces disruption and is confidently ambitious. In a predominantly young economy, it's fair to say that such young new generation leaders are and will remain pivotal as India charts a new phase in its growth journey. These are the ones who will make Pragati Sambhav. On that note, please allow me to welcome the dynamic Karan Adani. Karan is the Chief Executive Officer of Adani Ports and SEZs, the USD 25 billion logistics business of the diversified Adani portfolio. Karan is an economics graduate from Purdue and he joined Adani Ports and SEZs in 2009 to gain expertise in core operations at Mundra Port, the flagship port of Adani Ports and SEZs in Gujarat. He aims to augment the company's identity around an integrated business model that includes port operations, logistics and SEZ development, a combination that is rapidly transforming the company into a leading end-to-end -end logistics solutions provider. Thank you very much, Karan, for joining us today. It feels really good and great to be able to chat with one of India's finest next generation leaders. So let me jump right in with my first question, Karan. The Adani Group is a fine example of Indian entrepreneurship playing a key role in important sectors like infrastructure. So the expectations from you as the next generation leader they're very high. I'm sure you know that. So how do you cope up with the pressure of taking forward such a successful legacy? So uh, Manish, the way you're right that uh, the expectation is quite high, but I think the expectation is high on how do we do things better? Uh, how do we do it uh, faster? How do we do it uh, in a very much different way than what has been done in the past? And that is what uh, uh, you know keeps us at night and uh, you know charges up to to make sure that we 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 leave we, we live up to that expectation and i think uh, you know we embrace a uh, disruptive model and we always challenge that disruptive model so uh, you know the pressure is quite high but uh, you know one of the big things that we've learned is uh, you know and this is for all the leaders uh, in adani group is that uh, you know keep your feet on the ground uh, don't worry about uh, you know. Don't worry about the challenge. I think try to uh, you know try to make the challenges in a simple form. You know, take uh, you know simplify it as much as possible, and just uh, you know focus on getting those deliveries and execution. I think uh, once we get there, uh, you know whether we fail or whether we succeed, that's not important. I think the 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 idea is that we keep trying, we keep pushing, and we keep testing the boundary uh, of what we need to achieve. That, that's really inspiring. I, I like the, the focus you have behind execution and not um, getting too worried about the output or the results. Um, thanks, thanks for that, Karan. Karan, then, my next question to you is a little more personal. Um, how does the dynamics work between you and your father, Mr. Gautam Adani? As in, who listens to whom? And how do you uh, lean on each other for ideation as well as decision making? So, uh I think I think uh, I must say that we have a very open communication uh, between uh, me and my father. Um, I think uh, I'm, I must appreciate uh, you know my dad on this front because uh, he's very curious. He's actually more curious than all of us in terms of understanding uh, 
uh, you know, how the world is moving towards what young minds are thinking, uh, how are they thinking, why are they thinking what they are thinking. And uh, I think, uh, you know, we have that environment of, uh, you know, push and pull, you know, we, we have the ability to push back and to say, you know, this is not the right way of thinking, or maybe we should think about this way. And I think the way it works is a very constructive, uh, constructive uh, dialogue. Uh, I think uh, end of the day, uh, you know, we thrash it out on the table and then uh, whatever is the decision, end of the day, is a, whatever is the final decision taken by him, uh, you know, we go, we go and implement then. But I think what is important is that, uh, you know, he gives us the opportunity and this is across the group. He gives us the opportunity to openly discuss, to openly, uh, you know, if you don't agree with him, you know, op- uh, allow us that freedom to, to disagree, to, to give our point of view and, uh, to, and, and also to challenge our point of view. I think uh, a lot of times he questions that, uh, you know, questions, why are we thinking this way? And, uh, you know, and a lot of times uh, uh, he agrees with what we say. Sometimes we agree with what he says, but uh, end of the day, then we just uh, go with the final decision and then we go into impl- implementation. Most important is that uh, once we leave, uh, once we leave the the room, we don't we don't go back and uh, you know we don't go back and say you know I don't agree with this. Uh, you know this was not the right decision. I'm not going to implement that. That's that's at least that much. Uh, you know, uh, the way that, that's, uh, that's the way we work. I, I must tell you this, Karan, um, this resonates with, we have a set of leadership principles in Amazon, and one of them is disagree and commit, which is exactly what you're saying. Debate is healthy, but after that, go and focus on the execution. Awesome. So just following up on that one, Karan, um, what is um, the one or maybe two pieces of advice from Mr. Gautam Adani that has really helped shape you and your outlook as a business leader? So I'll say three things uh, which uh, has really helped me. And uh, the first one is uh, he always encourages us to, he always tells us that you need to be on the ground. Uh, You need to have pulse of the ground level situation. And that means that you should, uh, you should know what your, uh, what your truck driver is going through, what your operator is going through, what your customer is going through on the ground level. You know, you don't need to, when you talk to your customer, you don't need to talk to the CEO, but you talk to the manager on the ground of the customer who goes through the pains uh, day in and day out. And that helps you actually to think through better solutions and uh, to, to improve your service delivery. So one, uh, he says that you know, always be on the ground and sense opportunity from the ground. And that's where you get a lot of new insights, new opportunities, as well as new solutions. Uh, second, uh, he says that make everything, you know, when you're approaching a problem, keep it very simple. You know, there's, we have the tendency of becoming too, you know, bringing in a lot of jargons and, uh, you know, making it complicated. He says, you know, try to make things simple, go, go directly to what the root of the problem is or root of uh, you know, what you're trying to solve. So keep things simple and approach that rather than, you know, getting diverted with too many jargons and too many complexities. And the third thing he, uh, he says, you know, which which he has uh, told us is that, uh, and which we take it every day is that whenever you do something, think of scale. You know, don't do something which you can't achieve scale, which you can't uh, because if you are not at scale, you can't influence. If you can't influence, you can't make things better. Uh, you will always be a follower of something somebody else. So you know, whatever we do, you have to do at scale. You have to think of scale either at state level, national level, or at a global level. But it has to be at scale, which allows you to influence influence the way things are being done, influence the way you know, policies are being made, influence the way of, uh, you know, how you can change the game of the, you know, of the industry. So I think these are the big three drivers that, you know, fundamentals that he said uh, to us. And that's what, uh, you know, I, I take it with me every day. And uh, try to work work on that. It's not it's not easy on everyday basis, but uh, you know that's the principles we live by. Wow! No, I I love that. Stay close to the ground, invent and simplify, and think of scale. And no better group than Adani when it comes to scale. So awesome, Karan. This was really really. I'm sure uh, our viewers would learn a lot from that. Um, changing tracks a little bit. Um, so Karan, as you know, we love technology at Amazon and uh, 
uh, one of your recent statements was that uh, the logistics sector uh, wasn't an early adopter of technology and that such uh, tech-based interventions or disruptions can actually make uh, logistics zero cost. And this is a phrase you used. Can you elaborate on that uh, a little more? Do you think India is sitting at the cusp of uh, revolutionizing tech logistics by tech interventions? So, uh, you know, Manish, the way I look at it and, uh, you know, I'll just take a uh, little bit of uh, deviation over here and, uh, you know, and I'll come to my point, you know, sure. uh, when, you know, in 90s and 80s, you know, when uh, everybody used to have a camera, right? And you used to pay, pay for the role for the film of the camera. And uh, you know, one is that you used to pay for the hardcore hardware, and then there was the software, which is which was the role. And for every role, you had to pay, and you used to get that 30, 30 uh, clicks you could get. And then uh, you know, and at that point of time, if somebody told you that uh, or told anybody that you know that 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 uh, role, uh, what Kodak used to make, and that used to be the big right. uh, big money spinner for them. You know, if that is going to be zero cost, you know, at that point of time in 80s or 70s, I mean, 90s, when somebody said that, you somebody would think you're crazy. But I think that's what uh, digital camera did, right? When when the digital camera came in and today with the phones, uh, you know, what we are, I mean, you fast forward 30 years, you know, today with phones, you you don't know how many, how many pictures you take. At that point of time, you used to think about, you know, 30 pictures. Uh, you know, each picture is going to cost me 10 rupees or 20 rupees. And now people take thousands of pictures and uh, it really doesn't matter. It's uh, absolutely free. And I think that's what, uh, you know, what I personally feel logistics is going to be in 20, 30 years. And the way I look at it is, you know, think about logistics in terms of what is the biggest cost for us as a logistics player. One is the fuel cost, right? So fuel cost when you eliminate uh with which which is happening with uh, with electric uh, vehicles coming in you know you are eliminating your fuel cost and electric vehicle charging with solar panels or with wind you know you're not paying you you don't have to pay for sunlight so you are actually eliminating your fuel cost then the next level of disruption will happen is through autonomous vehicle because your after after fuel your second biggest cost is your cost of driver and your uh, your maintenance which comes with it so once you bring in autonomous vehicles uh, or that technology autonomous uh, technology you know you are eliminating eliminating your driver cost and with these two costs coming in then the focus i mean where the world will move towards is that you just keep using your your vehicle or your you know your uh, hardware as much as you want with the increase in the uh, utilization of your hardware, basically you're apportionating and you, you will reach, ultimately you will reach at a stage. Uh, this is what I feel that we'll reach at a stage that the, the, the cost of the uh, hardware is going to be negligible when you apportion it on a, on a, on a very large, uh, you know, uh, on a large volume. So when you think about it today, if, like say, for example, in your, you know, just taking example of Amazon today, if you guys are doing, 1 million parcel deliveries uh, a day. And think about it that from the same fleet, if you can do 10 or 20 million parcel deliveries and without removing removing the drivers, removing the fuel cost or the diesel or the petrol that you guys pay and it's just 100% electric and you remove, because you are removing the human intervention, you are actually making it really efficient. You know, the cost is gonna be as good as zero. And the next third level where actually I, I feel where it will happen is uh, why I feel it will go towards zero is because somebody will come and say, I want to monetize on this data. And I want to, I don't want to charge for the data. I want the data. I don't want, uh, I don't want to charge so that people don't uh, are scared of using the data. And I think that's where telecom had moved. And I'm pretty sure that in it's just a matter of time. I don't know whether it's going to be 10 years or 20 years, but I do feel that this is going to be, uh, you will reach at a stage where people will just say that, you know, you, you want to move your good from one place to another Yeah, take my, take my car or take my truck and, you know, uh, I'll do it for you for free. Wow. wow. 
This is really inspiring, Karan. As, as you said, you know, we ship out millions of packages and um, things like fuel inflation are so important right now. But um, what you just laid out is very, very inspiring. And the fact that you use the same hardware, um, the new technologies. So uh, just staying on the technology point, Karan, um, with the advancement of digital technologies, What's one of the things which has happened is that big cities and metros are no longer the focal point or the epicenters of growth and innovation. Yeah, we are also seeing an accelerated shift from physical work to knowledge work. Um, you know, how are you viewing these trends? Um, what role do you see uh, the smaller tier two and tier three cities playing in you know powering India's economic progress? So, uh, Manish, the way I see it, and especially. Uh, I would say COVID. I think two things uh, which has happened uh, with COVID. One is access to knowledge, uh, you know, same knowledge. Let me put it this way access to the same knowledge, whether or when I say knowledge, I include teachers as well. Uh, whether you are, uh, you know, in Nagpur or Pune or Bombay, this, the kids are getting the same access, and which has basically, uh, you know, removed that. Uh, I would say the divide which was there between tier one, tier two, and tier three city when it comes to no, uh, access to knowledge, and this has happened purely because of COVID and you know work from home and uh, you know everybody ha having to rework their business model, and uh, I think what what I personally feel is that the power of India is actually in rural India and the tier two or tier three cities. And I think the, the kind of ambition, the kind of, uh, 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 the kind of thinking and the kind of solution orientation and the kind of firepower, I would say the fire in the belly, if I may, the entrepreneurship that you will find in these kids and in this, uh, uh, you know, in this cities, it's unbelievable. And I think uh, if, if I may to power your MSMEs, to power your uh, SMEs, I don't think you can do it uh, in tier one cities and that power is only going to come from here. And I do believe that uh, end of the day for India to grow, your large part of your growth has to come from MSMEs and SMEs. If, if they are not becoming more powerful, if they are not growing, uh, you know, India cannot grow. And I think that whole divide, what has happened is the divide with the technology, the access to information, the access to markets, the access to uh, knowledge has completely been removed. I mean, you know, everybody's uh, can can whether it's a farmer or whether it's a young entrepreneur or whether it's an MSME. You know, those things have been removed. I think what is very important as a country to move towards to be able to harness that is how do we improve our infrastructure on the tier two and tier three cities. And when I say infrastructure, I don't mean physical infrastructure. I also mean technology infrastructure. So how do we make sure that you know each uh, each house, each village has uh, you know uh, uh, has has uh, you know fast internet available? Uh, each uh, each each one have are connected with uh, you know four G network or even five G. Uh, you know to make sure that make sure that there is proper storage of whatever they are doing. Uh, you know, physical storage to make sure that there is enough logistics movement happening. So I think that is, uh, I think if you ask me, that is the next stage of uh, uh, focus that the, that the country needs to do to make sure that we 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 tap into that firepower that the, that the country inherently has. And uh, you know, that's that's my view, and that's where that's where uh, you know, uh, groups like us, uh, companies like us, corporates like you guys also, we need to focus more. We need to give more opportunity over there, but we need to focus more over there. And once once those markets are developed, I'm sure, uh, you know, you know, the flow of goods, the flow of uh, opportunity will happen. No, you're right, Karan. I think it's truly really inspiring. I, I like the phrase, the firepower in tier two and tier three. Uh, a lot of us have encountered the, the hunger in the belly to do better. Um, yeah, I completely agree with that. So Karan, before I, I let you go, uh, I have to ask you this question on behalf of um, so many young leaders and entrepreneurs of the next generation who are out there. What would be your advice to them? 
as uh, you know, this set of entrepreneurs will play a very, very important and key role in shaping the future of India. So my advice, uh, I think India is, is at a great, uh, I would say, uh, tipping point of, uh, you know, the next growth. Uh, and I think that growth is going to be exponential. Uh, I think the opportunity that the country will provide, uh, I think nowhere else in the world, uh, these kind of opportunities will be there. Uh, my simple advice, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not big in giving advice, but my only uh, limited advice I would give uh, 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 to, to my fellow colleagues as well as entrepreneurs would be, uh, you know, I think we need, we, we need to uh, do better than what uh, our earlier generation did. I don't think so. We should shy away from uh, from uh, you know from from accepting or adopting new ways of working, new ways of technology, uh, or uh, you know uh, you know as one of the big things which is going on globally is on uh, on uh, climate change. So so adopting new 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 clean energy uh, because I do believe that uh, end of the day. Um, the next trillion dollar companies are going to come from uh, people who are going to ride the wave of uh, climate change and uh, technology change. And uh, either you can be with it or be against it. I think uh, if you're against it, we, uh, you know, there's only so far we can go. But if you're going to be with it, I think I India, is, I India is, uh, uh, is at the cusp of creating those trillion dollar economies. I mean, trillion dollar companies, if, if I may. And... Uh, the way it's it's funny you ask me, but the way I look at it is there's a full karma happening. You know, um, earlier in uh, you know in people used to call India as uh, Sone ki chidiya, right? It used to be yep. controlling one fourth of world's GDP, and I think we are getting there again. I I don't see. I I I, I personally feel in my lifetime we will see that uh, you know India going back to that uh, that uh, golden age where uh, we would be. Uh, controlling one fourth of global's uh, economy, and I think uh, people, uh, uh, entrepreneurs as well as young people, uh, are, are, unless they are not part of it and they are not part of that mission, uh, you know, India cannot reach there. And I think we just need to believe in India. We need to believe uh, in uh, make uh, you know we have to believe that we can reach there. And uh, you know, with, with 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 younger talent, I'm sure we will reach there. This is this is truly inspiring, Karan, and it's been a wonderful session, Karan, talking to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and inspiring thousands of young professionals uh, who watched you here at Amazon Sambhav uh, 2022. Thank you. I would also like to thank uh, our viewers for joining us today for this session. Stay tuned. Lots more coming your way, and have a great day. Yeah, brother, have brother.